The WRC is back in Australia, but this is an all-new event as the best drivers in the world will be tackling the gravel roads of New South Wales. And these gravel roads will wind their way around the stunning Northern Rivers region. To be precise, Rally Australia is based on the country's eastern coast in the coastal resort of Kingscliff in northern New South Wales. The drivers will head inland from here to tackle a whopping 35 stages. So what are these roads like? First days is, is more twist in general and second and third days faster, very, very fast like New Zealand with a very hard surface. And it's nice. If you compare Rally, this is exactly the same as New Zealand but just uh, the camber is not there. 60% of the stages are really fast and the other 40% is completely slow. When I, when I say fast, it's like Finland, and when I say slow, it's like Cyprus. A new rally, and are we going to see a new World Drivers' Champion in 2009? After his victory in Finland, Mikko Hirvonen arrives here with a three-point lead over the man who's lifted that title for the past five years, Sebastian Loeb. All the points we, we can have, they really count now, so uh, for sure it would be important to be ahead of Sebastian. The problem is if, if he takes two points more than me here, I, I'm not alone to decide then, because even if I want the two, win the two next, uh, if he's two times second, he will win the championship, so for that it would be important to, to score uh, in, enough points here. Do you think the pressure is now on Sebastian here? Yeah, don't have any, anything to worry about. For sure it's going to be a very tight fight, but I, like before Finland, I felt really relaxed and for sure it's going to be a difficult fight. For sure we can't have any, any zero points, then it, the championship fight is over, but if I want to take the title, I need to win the rally or at least beat Sebastian, so uh, you know, I can just sit in the car and go flat out and see what happens. Before we get to the action, here's a closer look at the championship standings. Kevin and leading low by those three points in the Drivers' Championship. Danny Sordo is third on 44 points, Yali Mati Latvala fourth on 31. And it's those four drivers who will be looking for points in the battle for the Manufacturers' Championship, where Citroen lead forward by 14 points. Welcome to Rally Australia. Australia's long-awaited return to the World Rally Fold has been given an impressive launch with a rally show in the streets of Mwilambar. There was a real carnival atmosphere and the sense of expectation was about to reach fever pitch because Mwilambar also hosted the Tweed Super Special Stage, a two-and-a-half-kilometre circuit through the middle of the town centre. Mikko Hivenen and Sebastian Loeb again provided the headline act. Loeb won this particular battle. The Frenchman just under four seconds up on his rival after the two runs through. A worrying start already for Mikko. The fastest through both passes, though, was Sebastian Ogier, a terrific start to the event for the Citroen Junior driver. That's how things stood after the blast through Willembar's streets, but here with the details on the day one stages out in the bush is Danny Sordo's co-driver, Mark Marty. Hello, Rally Australia first leg uh, will be 101 km. There are 13 stages, that it means that there are a lot of uh, short stages. The longest one is stage number four. Repco is 22 kilometers. It should be the most important stage of the day. It's very fast, over the crest, all the time flying, very fast. Then we will go to stage number six, seven, eight, and nine. They are completely different. Very twisty, uphill and downhill, with a lot of gravel and maybe a lot of dust. At the end of the day, we will do super special stage two times. So to the rally proper then on Friday morning and there's a rare sight in this part of the world awaiting the drivers. It's actually beginning to rain in Kyogle, which will do Mikko Hirvonen and no harm at all. The championship leader is on his way in what is an absolutely critical weekend in the title race. Mikko is currently in sixth and he's not a fan of running first on the road. There is some loose gravel on top of this mainly hard surface despite the rain. Further back, Sebastian Loeb is also attacking the Kyogle stage. Citroen's number one desperately needs to get back to winning ways after suffering a dramatic mid-season slump. Oh, some incredibly quick sections early on in this stretch of road. Yari Mati Latvala, meanwhile, will hope to continue his resurgent form after a fine podium finish in Finland. His focus will again be beating Danny Sordo, and he's made the perfect start in that task. With the quickest time through stage three, Latvala climbs past Sordo and is up to third. 
But still leading the way after this first gravel stage is Ogier. The 25-year-old is third fastest, and the Frenchman is still holding the big guns at bay at the moment. Ogier's advantage out front is 3.6 seconds after stage three. His namesake Loeb is in second with Latvala up to third. At 22 kilometers, the Repco stage is the longest of the weekend and could play a big part in the outcome of this rally. Kievanen is the first to get a taste of this impressive stretch of road. Miko quickly up through the gears and after a slightly off par getaway, can the championship leader make any impact on the leaderboard through here? A very tight and twisty start to the stage. Kevin needs to be completely concentrated with plenty of obstacles lining the road in these first couple of kilometres. It soon opens up, though, into one of the quickest parts of the rally. In contrast with Hirvan and Loeb, will be satisfied with his own start this morning. He's already over six seconds up on his championship rival and is quickly up to speed in this tricky downhill start to the Repco stage. Next up is Loeb's teammate Danny Sordo. The Spaniard's in fourth after the opening few stages and is also right in the mix at the top of the standings. After losing a position to Latvala, he'll hope to fight back immediately. <laughs> Yalimati is already well into the stage. With a slightly clearer line to the top three, he's using the better grip to full effect this morning. Let's go to Virtual Spectator to see how his splits are looking. And he's leading as they approach the six kilometre mark. Seven tenths of a second ahead of his teammate at that point with Loeb Citroen just behind. Moving on to the split after 14 and a half kilometers, Hirvonen's moved ahead of his teammate. A big push from Miko here. He's now 2.9 seconds up with Loeb dropping further back. Sebastian, a worrying 5.8 seconds down with eight kilometers to run. Miko is powering on through the final few corners. The Finn loves fast-flowing roads like this, and it's been a very impressive performance. His time equates to an average speed of an incredible 128 kilometers an hour. That was quite an effort for Miko, and judging from those early split times, Loeb's been finding the pace a little too hot to handle. He's eight seconds slower than Hirman and falls behind to fourth. There's nothing obvious amiss with the Citroen C4, but clearly all is not well with the world champion. And things could get even worse because Latvala is still flying. Yanimat has already claimed one stage win this morning and needs to better that target time to stay ahead of his teammate Hirvonen on the leaderboard. There's not much in it. He's slower than Miko in the stage, but has done just enough to stay ahead on the leaderboard. In the beginning of the stage, we actually hit something, and the steering is a little bit to the left, so it, that makes it a little bit difficult to drive in a very fast, uh, fast stage. But uh, uh, we will see. It's not. I'm not too concerned about that. Early leader Sebastian Ogier is still taking full advantage of his own favourable road position. Running seventh on the road, the Citroen Junior man is still right on the limit. He's been struggling a bit in the hanging dust from the cars in front, though, and he could lose the lead here. Yeah, he's already slower, only fifth fastest on stage. Ogier slips behind Latvala, making the Finn the new rally leader. Latvala's lead, though, is just 1.7 seconds. Hirvonen's up to third, Loeb drops to fourth. Danny Sordo also fell behind Miko, he's now fifth. So, lots for the drivers to think about in these new Australian stages. Here's Stobart VK4 driver Matt Wilson with the inside line on how to drive them. This is Rally Australia, brand new rally, and obviously coming into a, a new rally, um, you've got to make a brand new set of pace notes. Um, quite difficult to do, just to get everything right, you know, over two passes. So you'll probably find that we'll be we'll be even changing them when we're going competitively through the stages. It's a few defining characters of the rally, and you've just seen there. There's one one massive cut where the the car's fully off the road. Um, got quite a few of them throughout the rally, and you know, I think you'll see everybody taking them. They're, they're where you can gain quite a bit of time, so you'll be you'll be seeing that. Long flat press, 50, slow, slight left press, put by two plus. And you can see just coming up here, we we go over a cattle grid, and it's quite a lot of them. And 
and bridges as well. You really do have to just drop your speed right down and, and make sure that you're very neat. Just slide a little bit wide and, and hit the post on the outside and you're going to do some damage. The nature of the road is so, so wide and fast and um, quite representative of, of sort of leg two and, and the stages we do on, on the Saturday. Very, very open, quite like motorways in some ways. A lot of loose surface as well in pl places, so could be quite difficult to be, to be first on the road and, and clear a line. Apart from Finland, it could end up being one of the fastest rallies of the year, I think. Stage six has been cancelled due to environmental protesters throwing rocks on the road. Legal attempts to get the event cancelled had failed after an independent ecological report concluded the rally was unlikely to have any significant impact on the flora and fauna in the area. So that leaves four short stages before the first service stop. Lavala has already one win to his name this season. The world knows he has speed, but he needs to get his car to the finish line to keep Ford in the hunt in the manufacturer's title race. He's quickest again through stages seven and eight and maintains his run out front. OG2 has continued his fine start to Rally Australia. The Citroen Junior driver maintains his run in second and with his own fastest time in stage nine, closes up to just 1.1 seconds behind the leader. Mikko Hirvonen, though, has been unable to match the pace he showed in Stage 4. Struggling to get into a good rhythm on these shorter stages and still suffering as the road sweeper, Mikko slips to fifth behind Danny Sordo on Stage 8. Sordo's in terrific form out there this morning and the Spaniard's begun to pile the pressure on his five-time world champion teammate Sebastian Loeb. After Stage 8, he's only three-tenths of a second ahead of Danny. Sordo claimed a fastest time in stage five and with top four times in the other three, he also gets ahead of Loeb to move into third place. So the young pretenders continue to lead the way. Latvala out front, just 1.1 seconds ahead of Sebastian Ogier, who continues his fine run in second, with Sordo going back ahead of Loeb and Hirvonen. Back to the service park in Kingscliff next, where Hirvonen will be analysing why he's had such an inconsistent morning. You had a great performance on that long stage this morning, but on the shorter ones you seem to be struggling. Why is that? Well, it's quite obvious. I mean, in, in those short stages, they are very slow as, as well. So you are either braking and then accelerating again out of corner. And if there's loose gravel, you definitely you lose more time than in a fast stage where you can be flat out all the time. So uh, there's nothing I can do on those those bits. I just need to go as, as fast as I can and then see what what's the uh, or how fast the boys are coming behind. Why do you think it's you that's in the lead? Okay. Well, uh, after those. Stages, uh, those fast stages, we went to the to the uh, slow uh, technical stages. In those stages, um, they were very, very dirty, and it was getting cleaner, cleaning. And uh, I got the benefit from those, and also I managed to get the very good flow for the driving there. So that started to get me on the front. I was going to say, how are you managing to keep your rhythm in in these short stages? Uh, two key words: clean and tidy. Well, for the moment, it's a perfect start. Uh, we were confident uh, since uh, from the first stage this morning, so we, we push, uh, we push, and now uh, yeah, for the moment, it's okay. So it's the young guns who lead the way early on down under. Can Latvala and Oje hold on out front? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Rally Australia, where Yadimati Latvala is the leader after the first morning of stages on the gravel roads of New South Wales. Back out to the action southwest of Kingscliff, and with the roads now swept clear of loose gravel, it's an open playing field for all. And with the top five still close together, it's a chance for Hirvonen to claw back some time. Castro Edge East is a flowing, undulating stretch of road and should suit Miko's driving style. He's already slipped to almost 17 seconds behind the rally leader and needs to respond this afternoon. He's already attacking hard on this more gritty surface. Rally leader Latvala is again proving he's one of the best drivers in the world. 
He begins the afternoon loop with an advantage of just 1.1 seconds, but also with the confidence that he can stay there. He's right on the limit again through this twisty opening section of Castrol Edge East. It's become a battle of the sports emerging talents on this opening day of Rally Australia. Sebastian Ogier has been steadily improving in the latter part of his debut season in the WRC and is brimming with confidence following a sixth place finish in Finland. He's found himself in a fight for the rally lead in Australia, but can he catch Latvala? Sebastian Loeb, meanwhile, is already nearing the end of the stage. He was not happy with his Citroen C4 setup this morning. they hope his changes made in service will improve the situation. With Hirvonen already through, Loeb's pushing hard towards the finish. That's the target time. He needs to stay ahead of Miko, and I think he could be struggling to hold on to fourth here. That's not good enough. Loeb falls back behind Ford's number one to fifth. He's now 1.7 seconds back. In four minutes 35 decimal zero, 3.9 slower than Miko in 6.85 k's. Yeah, very slow. Not so much grip. Uh, nothing to say. <laughs> Citroen's number two, Danny Sordo, is coming under pressure of his own. Danny's giving it everything he can, but his efforts aren't good enough to prevent him losing time to Miko. He's another three tenths of a second slower, and now just under four ahead overall. It's becoming a promising afternoon for Ford, and rally leader Latvala is fastest through so far. He set a very impressive benchmark for Ogier to chase. And Ogier has got his pedal to the metal here. Great technique across this Australian gravel, but he's not quite quick enough and loses time to Latvala. He's now 3.8 seconds behind the fin. Confirmation there that Loeb's dropped to fifth. Sordo stays third, but Hirvonen is now less than four seconds behind. Just two stages remain before a return to the Super Special through the streets of Mwillenbar. And on this second pass through the stages, Hirvonen's pace has been very impressive. He's already passed Loeb. His next target is Citroen's number two, Danny Sordo. Loeb has adopted an interesting tactic of using worn tyres at the rear of the car to gain an advantage on the Tarmac Super Specials. It's costing him a bit of time on the gravel and he loses a few seconds to the four drivers, who said he's still in fifth at the end of stage 13. Sordo is running behind the front two, so has the opportunity to play a tactical hand and ensure a more favourable road position for the following day. He does just that, backing off near the finish to deliberately promote Hirvonen up to third place. There is no sign of tactics from the rally leader, though. Latvala pushes on at full speed to take his third consecutive stage win and play the perfect support driver role, backing up his championship chasing teammates. And there will be another man ahead of Miko, shifting the loose gravel even more, because second place Sebastian Ogier has been one of the stars of the opening day. With the top five still fairly evenly matched, Henning Solberg remains the best of the rest in sixth. The Stobart VK driver has adjusted his settings slightly to improve a slight handling problem, but for the moment, he looks unlikely to challenge the front runners. Matthew Wilson is running in seventh. The British driver has already suffered a half spin and has struggled for confidence on the slippery surface for much of the day. Power steering problems haven't helped his progress either. He's currently just over half a minute behind his teammate Solberg. Khalid al Qasimi's day, though, has come to a premature end. The Abu Dhabi Tourism Authority back driver was fighting for ninth until a broken steering arm ended his day one run. It looks like Loeb's tyre choice proved to be inspired. Amazingly, he's taken 7.7 .7 seconds out of Hirvonen on the two runs through the Tweed Super Special, and he moves up to third. Miko slips to fifth. Latvala is leading at the end of day one, though, 2.2 seconds ahead of Ogier. Day one of Rally Australia has been full of surprises, and you can expect more on the super fast day two. See you after the break.
Welcome back to the Repco Rally Australia, where the top five are covered by less than 24 seconds going into day two. And here's fourth place Danny Sordo's co-driver Mark Marty with some more details about the route ahead. Day two of Rally Australia, completely different of day one. They are around Cayagol, 10 stages, 130 kilometers. The stages are much more faster than the day one. Basically, the stage 16 and 17 are the fastest over the crest, more fast sometimes than in Finland. At the end of the day, we will do super special stage two times again. So to the flat-out action on day two then, and with the top five still very close, we're all set for a fascinating fight. Valley leader Yali Mati Latvala will be first to take on the 20 kilometres of Daco. We're back underway in New South Wales, and overnight rain has made conditions quite muddy in places, but it will lessen the problems caused by loose gravel for Latvala as the first car on the road. Currently in second after one of the drives of day one is Sebastian Ogier. Without the favourable row position he enjoyed yesterday though, it remains to be seen how the Frenchman will fare on this more slippery surface. Oh, and that's the first mistake we've seen from Sebastian this weekend. He'll lose a few seconds after that overshoot. He stalled the car as well. So finally, the pressure is beginning to show. Road order positions were decided before the evening super special yesterday. So after losing two places through the streets of Mawillambar last night, Hivenen actually begins fifth on the leaderboard, despite being third on the road today. Oh, but he's very wide and he's hit something there. He looks like he's got away with it. Though he has smashed a window at the back of the car, but that looks like the only damage. Looking at the replay, you can see how far off the road Miko was. A lucky escape for the Finn there. And once again from inside the car, Miko bracing for the impact when he starts to slide. Danny Sordo begins the day in fourth place. He's ahead of Hirvonen and just a tenth of a second behind his teammate Sebastian Lowe. Up ahead though, Latvala still looks in control at the moment. After an error-filled start to the season, he'll be feeling the pressure more than most. But stage 16 is cleared with no drama and a pretty impressive time of 9 minutes 49.2. So Hirvonen has discovered how difficult it is to read the braking points on these wet roads. It's still been an impressive time from Miko in here. Let's catch up with the championship leader at the end of the stage. Well, we went, just went wide in one corner, I went over... Um, Mailbox, but no bigger dramas, but it, it's been really, really slippy, very slippy, but uh, it was a good start. Loeb began this stage over 20 seconds behind Ogier, so should make up a good deal of that in here following his compatriot's mistake. But the time he'll be most concerned with is out of his championship rival Hirvonen's, who began the Deco stage less than a second behind. Miko's already through, and that Seb's target to stay in front. No, he's slower. Loeb slips back to fourth, but it's still very tight. He's only two tenths of a second behind overall. A bruising start today, too, then, and another reshuffle at the top. Hirvonen won the stage and is promoted two places from fifth to third. And there's still only three and a half seconds between Miko, Loeb, and Sordo. Lavala's lead over Ogier is up to 14 seconds after the Frenchman's overshoot. A new rally means new pace notes, and with 35 stages, the pressure is on the drivers not to make any crucial mistakes here. A wrong note or a missed tree stump can have disastrous consequences. The relationship between driver and co-driver is a crucial element of rally success, and pace notes need to be determined accurately and delivered clearly, or it can all go horribly wrong. The easiest place to make a mistake is that you you get the distance wrong after the corner, after the crest, and then you end up breaking way too late for the next corner and you just go wide or then you go off the road. Most of the mistakes are on the speed, uh, on the speed and then in the 
on the inside of the corner. Sometimes you don't have enough time to, to check the, the angle of the corner, the speed, and check all the, all the insides, all the, if you can cut or not can cut. If the timing is, is not correct, that's, that's going to be bad. If I'm late with the base note, then, then we're off, definitely. He, he's kind of blind. He just listens what I say and he goes according to that. So if I'm late, we go off. If we made a mistake during the recce, it's just some corner, put wrong information on the paper, we go off, for sure. <laughs> The pace notes are made on the recce where the crews get two runs through each stage of the rally. You, you have to treat recce just as importantly and, and put as much focus on recce as you can. So, you know, you can't just get there late in the morning or not have breakfast before you go. All those things are important because the concentration levels in the recce is, is the main thing. The key to rallying is the pace notes and getting those exactly spot on for the first time you come through there at full noise in a rally car is a very, very hard thing to do. During a recce, the cars travel at a maximum speed of 60 kilometres an hour. And making notes from scratch, mistakes inevitably get made, and sometimes the drivers will correct these during the rally. But making changes at full speed can be a costly distraction. This was Sebastian Loeb's spectacular off in Greece this year, which came shortly after making a change in a pace note. We compared Loeb with his championship rival Mikko Hirvonen on the first run through the 20-kilometre Deco stage, which you've just seen, to see how many changes each driver made to their pace notes. We counted that Sebastian made 10 changes to Mikko's two, but he only lost 1.1 seconds to the Finn in the Ford. It'll be interesting to see how their times compare in the rerun this afternoon. So let's get back to the action to see who's got their pace notes right in the next three stages. Can Sebastian Loeb fight back after losing a position to his championship rival Nico Kiervenen? Certainly have marked that big cut in his notes, one of many in this very fast rally. A stage win in the Bosch test sees him repass Hirvonen, and with Ogier a little off the pace, he moves up to second. He's quickest again in stage 18 with an average speed of 130 kilometers an hour. Henning Solberg's already been having a lively ride this morning as he seeks to get back on terms with the leading five drivers. Oh, but he's off a high speed moment for Henning and co driver Kato Menkerud. That was a fairly hefty impact, but they should be able to continue, albeit without their front windscreen. Bizarrely, this is the third time in the last few years they've been forced to drive with this handicap. And despite the Ford Focus having seen better days, amazingly, the Norwegians have not only continued, but maintained sixth place. What's it like to drive the stage with no windscreen? It's better with the windscreen, yes. <laughs> At least this time there's no snow. Oh, there's no snow, but this is the third time without the windscreen, so I am... Uh... I'm glad I've been sponsored by a gla <laughs> car glass uh, company. <laughs> Conrad Rautenbach is another to go off the road in these stages, sliding into a ditch on stage 19. Three right. Into six left, four pins long and tight. Ah. Conrad would not be able to continue thanks to a damaged steering arm. Out front, there is still little sign of a slip up from the rally leader. With the daunting knowledge that five time world champion Loeb is looming large in his rear view mirror, Lapel is having to drive at the absolute limit to keep the Frenchman behind. Take one look at the Ford Focus's telemetry here, and you'll soon see how hard Yanni Matti is pushing. Over 180 kilometers an hour, this is absolutely breathtaking driving from the Finn. And Lavala's teammate Hirvonen too is having to take a lot of risks to stay in touch with Loeb. Oh, and a big sideways moment there from Miko. He just about got away with that, but the errors are beginning to creep in as the stakes rise. He's seen Loeb win the previous two tests, and here in stage 19, he's giving it everything to respond. He should beat him this time. 
Yes, a stage win for Miko. He makes up 3.3 seconds on Loeb. The gap between the two championship rivals is now just 4.4. So both Loeb and Kieran and overhaul Sebastian Auger, who slips back two places to fourth. So Latvala's closest challenger is now Loeb, who's three and a half seconds back. Henning Solberg is still sixth after driving two of those stages with no windscreen. You heard our reporter mention that there was no snow this time in Henning's car, a reference to this similar incident from 2006 in Sweden. Different country, different conditions, but as ever, Henning providing lots of entertainment. And he'll be looking forward to the return to service, which is situated just off the beach in Kingscliff more than most. The Norwegian's mechanics face a race against the clock to get the Ford Focus roadworthy for the afternoon. Not just the windscreen to replace, but there's also a significant amount of bodywork damage. It's a fine effort from the team to get Henning back on his way within the allotted 30-minute slot. It's been a less hectic service stop for Loeb's mechanics. How much of your speed today was down to road position? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't think it was a lot of cleaning uh, because it was really wet in the morning. Then it started to be more, more dry and so more, a bit more of uh, road cleaning in the stage three, I think. But uh, after that, uh, we, we found a bit a better compromise in the setting and uh, Miku was on a, a one or two little mistakes that cost him uh, one or two seconds each time and uh, that made a difference because it was really close and we had really to be on the limit. Miko, it looked like Sebastian had got the better of you this morning and then that final stage you pulled some time back out of him. Yeah, well I, I had to do something otherwise he's going to get away. So it's just, it's, it's going to be a really close fight. and. Um, He's in a good position now. The weather is drying and there's been lots of loose gravel in a few of the stages again, so uh, it's going to be a difficult fight. After the service break, it's back out to the beautiful Northern Rivers countryside where Latvala's hold on the lead is sure to come under increased pressure from Loeb. As Miko just mentioned, with the sun now shining, the roads are drying out fast and the surface is still very slippery in places. Gary Matty is not in a position to risk everything to keep Loeb behind. His team still need him to secure good points to keep their own championship hopes alive. Loeb is a second quicker than Hirvonen in stage 20, setting an incredible average speed of 132 kilometers an hour. Moving into stage 21, and Loeb has a chance to move into the lead if he can beat that target time. Yes, a great drive from the world champion in just eight and a half kilometers. He's made up over six seconds on Latvala, and Seb takes the top spot. He now holds an advantage of 5.3 seconds over Yari Matti. But it remains to be seen if he wants to stay in the lead with the final day's road position to consider. Latvala at least can ensure that his teammate doesn't have to start first on the road on Sunday stages. But he's all over the place here in stage 23, very close to going off. But he hasn't quite got away with it. He's picked up a right rear puncture. And look at that, the tyre completely coming away from the rim, taking some bodywork with it. It's the last thing his teammate and Ford needed. Yanimati drops almost 50 seconds. Sebastian Auger has also had a frustrating day after dominating the rally with Latvala on the opening leg. The Frenchman is almost 16 seconds behind the new leader Loeb going into stage 22. Oh, and a big moment for Auger too. Like Latvala, he loses a lot of time and concedes a position to Danny Sordo. Being ahead of both Citroens on the road, Hirvonen's powerless to prevent them using tactics on this final gravel stage of the day to give them superior road positions. He very nearly comes unstuck at the same corner that caught him out earlier. In stage 22, he betters his time on the first run by 3.2 seconds. But Loeb makes even more of an improvement. He goes fastest on this penultimate gravel stage, extending his lead to over 11. Virtual Spectator shows us, with the help of those updated pace notes, how much Seven Miko improved on the second run of the Deco stage. Miko, who made those two changes, improving by 3.2 seconds, while Seb bettered his time by 7.9 after making 10 changes. 
But back to Loeb at the end of stage 23. The road order for the final day is decided on the position after this stage rather than the super specials and Seb has backed right off just before the flying finish. Anything slower than that target will ensure he ends the day behind Miko. We've already seen how much these roads have been cleaning, so leaving himself first on the road for day three would not be a wise move. Yes, he finishes 4.1 seconds back and has also slipped behind his teammate Sordo too. And there was worse to come for here, but not only will he start first on the road on day three, once again, he's soundly beaten in the super specials. It was Danny Sordo who ends the day as leader, while Kiernan and Loba tied for second, just one tenth of a second behind. Latvala finishes in fourth and OGA fifth. I think it was the best solution we had if we want to, to win the rally tomorrow. Uh, it's not a pleasure to let 20 seconds like that or 15, I don't know exactly, but uh, um, uh, with this regulation we, we had to do that. And uh, so, okay, I just do it. Yeah, it's going to be a difficult day. Wasn't planning to be first on the road on, on Sunday, but you know, that's how it is now. So uh, I have to just try to do all I can. Will Loeb's tactics produce his first win for five rallies, or can Hivenen defy the odds and make it four in a row? All those questions and more will be answered after the break. Danny Sordo is the leader going into the final day of Rally Australia, but all eyes will be on Sebastian Loeb and Mikko Hirvonen as they battle for the World Drivers' Championship. This may be a new venue for Rally Australia, but this event has often been crucial to the outcome of this championship. In 1991, Carlos Sainz arrived in Perth as championship leader, but in an attempt to match the pace set by his nearest challenger, Juha Kankinen, in the Lancia, he memorably rolled his Toyota. Kankinen went on to win the rally and the Drivers' Championship. In 1999, it was Tommy Mackinnon and Didier Oriol who were fighting it out for the Drivers' Crown. Didier led on day two, but this venture into the bush ended his rally. Co-driver Denis Giraudet was inconsolable, whereas Mackinnon's emotions were the direct opposite as third place was enough to give him his fourth successive world title. With Sebastian Loeb absent following a mountain bike accident, Marcus Gronholm needed a top three finish to give him a chance of overhauling the Frenchman in 2006. But it was all over on day one when the Finn hit a rock and rolled his Ford Focus. Loeb became champion while sitting at home in Switzerland. But back to the present and to tell us about the day three stages, here's Mark Marty again. Okay, day three of Rally Australia. It will be the longest day of the rally, 124 kilometers and 10 stages. For me, the last stage, number 35, must be definitely the most important stage because if there are 22 kilometers, you must be concentrated until the end of the rally. With the victor taking crucial extra championship points at the end of the day, this could be a pivotal moment in the title race. Hivenen currently leads the Drivers' Championship by three points, remember, but starting first on the road is the last place Miko wants to be on these loose gravel stages. And Loeb is not waiting around. He storms into the rally lead on the short Monroe stage. already putting his foot down then it seems Miko is already suffering a little as the road sweeper and unfortunately for Miko there is a lot of loose gravel in the long stage 27 but it's a good drive through the early sectors he's got the edge on the Frenchman at the moment The problem for Miko is that it's not only load he has to worry about, as Danny Sordo too has a big part to play in the outcome of this rally and the championship. The Spaniard slipped a third after a small mistake in the Monroe stage, but he's certainly making amends in 27. Danny is giving it everything here. Citroen's number one, meanwhile, has made short work of getting back into the lead. 
Lobe is going to be very, very tough to beat, but with the top three so close and the speed so dangerous, anything could happen on this final leg. Further up the stage, Hirvonen's put in a solid performance despite his lack of grip. All he can do now is wait for his rival's times to come in. The Finn throwing the car through this bumpy stage here. But the split times haven't looked good for Mikko. Sordo's been steadily making up time throughout this 21-kilometer forest road. That's Danny's target time. If he beats that, he'll get past Hirvonen. And... Yes, a terrific start to the day for Danny. He surges past Mikko, but only by one-tenth of a second. Sordo's time is even proving too quick for his teammates. Loeb's had to raise his game in here after being down on Miko's early splits. He responds well, though. Seb ends the stage 3.4 seconds quicker than Hirvonen. Yadimati Latvala begins the day in fourth, but 44 seconds away from the top three after his puncture on Saturday. But, incredibly, there's more misfortune. He's nudged a tyre off its rim, and that's the end of his hopes of claiming a podium spot. Hirvonen needs to limit the damage done on this first pass and hope he can fight back on the grippier afternoon loop. He does just that in the 11 kilometer stage 28. Miko finally sets his own fastest time, making it back into second place ahead of Sordo, but he has been losing more time to Loeb. Further back, Matt Wilson is fighting for sixth with his teammate Henning Solberg. The crowd enjoyed that big moment, but like Latvala, he's knocked a tire off its rim. Despite that, he somehow manages to stay ahead of Solberg. So that's the state of play after the final morning. Hivenen's back into second, but his advantage over Sordo is just 3.8 seconds. Loeb now has a lead of 11 with five more stages to run. So the championship battle bubbling nicely, and it's going to have an extra ingredient over the final two rounds. As 2003 World Rally champion Peter Solberg has announced he will be returning in Spain and Great Britain, driving a 2008 spec Citroen C4. The drivers are welcome to the remote service in Kyogle by the Gitanbul people, the indigenous owners of some of the land in which the rally crosses. The servicing is taking place on the main street of the town. Are you trying to catch Sebastian or are you trying to keep Danny behind you now? Well, it's the same thing. Danny is so so close and uh, he's been really fast as well that I just need to go flat out. And if I can catch Sebastian, then good, but I hope that I can keep uh, Danny behind. So to the final loop then, just 69 kilometers remain. Loeb currently leads Hirvonen by 11 seconds. With a clear road, the fight should be very close this afternoon. Winning stage 31 is the perfect way to start and Seb continues to edge further away from Miko in the following three stages. Running ahead of Loeb on the road, Hirvonen is giving his all, but despite his best efforts, his championship rival has managed to keep an eye on Miko's splits and adjust his speed accordingly. Hirvonen's also been locked in battle with Sordo for second. The Spaniard clearly intent on giving Hirvonen a real fight to the finish on this last afternoon. In stage 32, Sordo makes it past Miko to claim second, only for Hirvonen to take the position back on the following test. Sebastian Ogier, meanwhile, should now have an easy ride to fourth place. With Latvala a long way behind after his latest mishap, the Citroen junior man has a healthy half a minute advantage as we head into the final stage. The Repco test is 22 kilometers long and features some of the most exciting roads in this spectacular new look Rally Australia. Loeb is on his way and with an advantage over Mikko Hirvonen of more than 18 seconds. Barring a late disaster, this should be a formality for someone as skilled as the five-time world champion. We've seen another terrific performance too from Danny Sordo. He's only 2.1 seconds behind Hirvonen coming into this stage, so this is the battle to watch on this second run through Repco. The Spaniard could give his teammate a massive boost in the title race if he can get back ahead of the Ford man. And with his home event next on the calendar, he could still become the deciding factor in the championship, and that's a healthy time for Miko to chase. 
Sordo's through then, so it's up to Hiverden to ensure he stays ahead. The difference between second and third place is two points, which at this late stage of the season would be a big blow to Mikko. Hiverden driving like a man possessed here to keep Danny behind. Oh, very wide there. He's got to be careful. He may not be able to catch the rally leader, but he's clearly determined to hold on to second. The flying finish is not far away. If he beats that target, second place is his. It's looking good, he's into the last corner. I think he should do this. Yes, a strong finish for Mikko, and I'm sure he'll be a relieved man inside the car. There's been many rallies this year that we've been absolutely flat out from start to finish, and this was one of those, but, but I couldn't help it. Citroen, they played it really well yesterday, so uh, we, I just didn't have a chance today. Do you think that was the key moment, having to run first on the road today? Well, for sure, I think it, could have been another way around if I was behind, but there's so many ifs, so, you know, we just need to forget this one now and move on. There can be no mistakes now from Sebastian Loeb. The Frenchman has not won a rally since Argentina back in April. He's experienced a slump unlike any we've seen from him in recent years. But his return to form here in Australia has been emphatic, and it couldn't have come at a better time in terms of his championship hopes. He's into the last few corners and Citroen's number one looking as controlled as ever. Into the flying finish, he's going to be a little slower than Mikko but it won't matter now. He drops 5.9 seconds but the win is secured. It's the 53rd victory for Loeb and co-driver Daniel Elena. Sebastian Loeb, 2009 Rally Australia winner. Argentina was the last time you won this year. Yeah, this one is a good one because uh, it was a... Uh... A hard fight and, uh, well, it's a long time you didn't win. It's especially good to win another one. So it was really important for the championship to win again here. And uh, we've done it, so I'm really happy. Behind the leading trio, Ogier got home in fourth, Latvala claimed fifth, Matthew Wilson was sixth, heading Solberg seventh with Federico Villagra in eighth. But at the top, Loeb claims those 10 championship points, two more than Mikko Hirvonen. It's been a great performance from Loeb, but as he arrives back at service, his team boss knows there's still work to be done. For the manufacturers, I think it could be, we could be confident, but uh, for the drivers, um, I, I believe in Seb, so I have no problem. The next rally will be um, Spain. It's uh, tarmac, so maybe we, we could um, we could think to be first and second in Spain, and then uh, the end, the finish will be in Wales, and it could be a quite interesting situation. So with two rounds remaining, Mikko Hirvonen still leads in the Drivers' Championship, but Loeb has cut his advantage to just one point. Sordo consolidated his hold on third place. He's now on 50. And Citroen extend their lead over Ford in the Manufacturers' Championship to 18 points. Ford have it all to do now if they're to regain that title. Here are the winners of Rally Australia, Sebastian Loeb and co-driver Daniel Elena. The champagne will rarely have tasted so sweet after such a hard-fought win. So we're heading back to Europe for the penultimate round of the championship, but right now we'll leave you with a few memories from Australia's impressive return to the WRC.